Hi, Jino. Today we're here to talk to you about your father, mm -hmm. uh, the world famous Joey Ventel. Uh, can you please tell us about the father, about um, the man, Joey? Okay, well, growing up, he was, um, you know, a workaholic, did everything for his family, provided for him, um, made struggles and sacrifices, missed in family parties, missing um, confirmations, graduations, because he wanted to give everything to me and my mother. And what kind of contributions did he do to the local community? Oh, countless. I mean, anything from AIDS to cancer to sickle cell to um, dwarfism, um, special needs children, cancer, um, and also private stuff that we didn't talk about. Like, we would do things behind the scenes because we don't want the media to know everything we were doing. So we didn't do it for publicity. We did it because we cared and we wanted to. And a lot of people ask, how come he never uh, expanded? Um, Dad always said never be greedy in business. And, you know, once you have one, you know, you master that. But if you have multiple, it's hard to run the same thing from the whole place because everybody has different eyes and views. Is there anything your dad said that he regretted not doing in business-wise? Um, no, he, he, he was the type of person that always did everything he wanted and if he didn't do it, he would try it and always see if it worked or it didn't work. He was pretty much successful, but sometimes it didn't work and he would be like, okay, let's do it this way now. If this doesn't work, let's do it this way. And every day is different, so it may work on Tuesday, but by Thursday, it might change a little bit just because it'll tweak it and make it a little bit better or faster. So he, and plus he kept his mind going. It always made him think and stuff. Instead of doing the same thing day after day, it just kept his mind going. How do you, how do you think your dad would like to be remembered? Um, as a true American, uh, um, someone that was patriotic and someone that cared about his uh, country and his uh, community. I know he used to talk to me a lot about going back to Italy. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go back with him there? Well, we went one time. How was it? Huh? It was you fun. want to talk it, about it? Yeah, it was um, definitely a little uh, culture shock for him with the whole customs and the way, you know, traffic and everything. But um, he enjoyed it. I mean, it was just something different. And we got to look at a different side of the world. And um, it was very uh, historical. And I loved it. I thought it was awesome to see. What was your dad's favorite thing to eat? Um, he liked his uh, eggs and peppers and like potatoes, and, like chicken cutlets. That was his like staple thing. Did he have his cheesesteak with or without? Um, usually with. Onions? Yeah, back in the day, you see like three or four day. Wow. Before he had the heart problem, he used to eat cheesesteak like that. It was coming out of his blood. Mm -hmm. And it, as far as the family, you said who's running the business now? Yourself and other family members, or who? Uh, um, myself. Mm -hmm. And, and I said, have and I have a management team that I work with. Mm -hmm. So it's all together. It's not just one person. I like with in business. I believe it's a it's a team and a group where it's better to have three brains than one because everybody's going to help everybody else out. But if you have it one-sided, you know, it's just, you're not going to grow. Uh, one thing we'd also like to ask you, your, your dad was so charismatic. Where did he get that from? Um, I don't know, because everybody said he was like a hard shell. He was like, you know, um, feisty and like very uh, opinionated and this that. But really, he was just like a big teddy bear. I mean, he had a big heart and he always told like me and my mom that we're very fortunate let's give the others so anything extra he would always help out and just he felt like it was like kind of like his job kind of thing like he he enjoyed helping people and improving people's lives because if he did it he was hoping we have someone else do it. When did Gino's open? 1966. Does he remember his first customer? Did you ever talk about him? Um I guess so I, mean, I, I never really went over that one. Mm -hmm. But he remember being on the on the milk crate making cheese sticks because it was too short, <laughs> and um, you know he started with six dollars and told, turned it into a multi-million dollar business. Now, did he ever look to add anything more to the menu? No, Dad was always simple and and basic. He never wanted to add like all toppings and sandwiches and sentences. Keep it basic, makes the line go as you know people call it an assembly line because it's like you just know what you want and just keep go 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 go. What are his employees saying about him now? Um, I mean, we're missing him. It's mm -hmm. definitely quiet in here. Um, but it's it definitely a void in their lives because most of the people here have been here for over 20 years or more. 
So, I mean, it's like someone will come to him as a father. Yeah, so like you said, even though they may not be blood, they're still his family. Oh, yeah. I mean, we have people, I mean, our longest is 38 years. Wow. So he had the most Europeans. <laughs> That's great. Now, uh, another thing I'd, I'd like to ask you is what would you like to say to your father? Um, that I miss you and I hope I do a good job and, you know, I make you proud. And what would you like to say to his loyal customers? Uh, thank you for the business and um, keep coming because the steaks are going to be cooking. Anything else you'd like to say? No, I think we covered it all. Okay, thanks. Thank you.